Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. Today we're covering uh, chapter six, um, first section. So um, we're going to cover in this chapter three kinds of magnets that you'll encounter in nature. Um, one is diamagnetic uh, material, the other is paramagnetic material, and the other is ferromagnetic material. So you're probably familiar with, when I say magnets, I'm usually referring to you know ferromagnets. And these are fairly obvious that they have a magnetic field um, even before they're subjected to a magnetic field. Um, it's not quite as simple as as you'd think. There's more going on here than than what you would. Uh, oh, these are so much fun. You need a pair of these to play with. You know, don't swipe your credit cards with them. No, these probably aren't strong enough to mess up your credit card. But anyway, um, diamagnetics, diamagnetics. Um, so. Uh, When there's no magnetic field, they have nothing. There's no magnetic field they're producing. But um, when you do put them in a magnetic field, it produces a magnetic field opposite to it. So it has a tendency to kind of cancel out whatever magnetic field it's subjected to. Paramagnetics, as its name suggests, um, like to uh, multiply um, the magnetic field. They like to add to it with a new magnetic field on the inside that's, that's parallel to the the magnetic field it's subjected to. Whereas ferromagnets, the ferro having to do with iron, iron's a very common material that you're probably familiar with. Um, not only does it uh, magnet, not only can you give it a magnetic charge, so to speak, um, but it also uh, behaves as a very powerful um, paramagnetic and it has a memory. In the early days of computers, the they had iron core memory, which was actually bits of iron with loops of wire around them, where you could read off the magnetic field that the iron piece had remembered. And you can also set one by putting a strong magnetic field on top of it. So um, unlike um, electric polarization, the magnetic field is not always going to oppose whatever um, magnetic field you put it into, especially in the case of paramagnetics and ferromagnetics. So we, we did talk about, you know, um, very briefly that there's some materials that tend to align with the electric field. And uh, if you, if it weren't for all the thermal collisions and the thermal motions that were going on, you could actually multiply the electric field by, by subjecting it to a small electric field. And, and in a way that's, you know, we're going to see actual samples of that in nature that that, that happens. So anyway, uh, this is a, a good overview of the chapter, and we'll continue by digging in. Thanks for your time. Bye.